Hello there, my name is Cornelia Lucy and I'm a practicing positive psychologist and coaching psychologist. Today I've been asked to talk about an example of a day in the life of a coaching psychologist. Well, let me begin by saying that every day in the life of a coaching psychologist is varied and that's just one of the reasons I love what I do. An example day might be delivering a team coaching session in the style of a co-development set or an action learning set where the team support and coach one another to problem solve on often very complex situations they're facing. Um, that team session might then be followed by a one-to-one -one coaching session where I might be supporting somebody early on in their career or transitioning in a role or a leader who wants support with a particular development goal. Um, and that development goal might be something like supporting a coachee to develop a sophisticated way of using their strengths at work or it might be managing their well-being, or it might be developing emotional control. Another day, I might spend the whole day coaching individuals in one organisation as part of a development programme, or I might be working across several organisations and moving towards them. Uh, this coaching work can happen face-to-face -face or by telephone or online, and different approaches work for different people based on different learning styles, and coaching psychologists work this out collaboratively with a client as part of the con contracting phase. Another day I might be training a group um, in using coaching skills for performance management conversations or to create a learning culture as part of a leadership development programme. It's also really important to note that everything in our practice as coaching psychologists is underpinned by psychology. You're always considering the different psychological factors affecting or influencing the person or the team, organisation or system in front of you. You might be thinking about the biological or physiological influences such as the nervous system and how that's affecting the person's resilience in front of you. Or you might be considering the cognitive aspect of psychology in terms of what recurrent behaviour patterns in this person uh, are they demonstrating and are they aware of them. In terms of the process you use, you might be drawing on a range of psychological theories or models. So you might be thinking about theories on goal setting or motivation or whether to use a solution focused model or cognitive behavioural model or even parts of both. All of this knowledge supports me to make decisions on how best to support the person or team and situation or system dynamics in front of me. And subsequently, this feeds into the quality of the coaching outcomes and how effective it is for the participants. Coaching psychology is both an art form and a science in that regard. As a professional, using psychology to underpin my practice means that I had to study to a high standard in order to do so. I need to be highly ethically attuned to the way that I work and I need to continually learn and keep up to date and develop my coaching psycholo psychology practice. I need to constantly reflect on what I'm doing. I need to ensure I have regular supervision, supervision to support the development of my reflective and effective practice, to support my own professional development and to maintain my well-being. Supervision is critical to ensure my clients get the best level of coaching psychology to support them. In order to maintain my professional standards as a coach, I've ensured I'm members of key bodies to hold myself to account and to share best practice and to network with my coaching psychologist peers. So I'm part of the European Mentoring and Coaching Council and I'm a senior practitioner. Um, I've also completed a master's practitioner level course studying an MSc in applied positive psychology and coaching psychology at UEL, as well as already having a master's in leadership from UCL. I'm also delighted to be part of the special group in coaching psychology of the British Psychological Society, from which I learn so much. I've also published research to contribute to the existing body of knowledge we have in coaching psychology that is ever growing. For me, it's really important to build the rigour and psychological understanding of the profession for both the profession itself and for the public benefit. To find out more about coaching psychology, you can get in touch with the special group in coaching psychology at the BPS. Thank you for listening.